Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Unboxing Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Westinghouse iGen 200S Portable Power Station. Special thanks to Westinghouse for sending this out for the channel to review. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box and see what it comes with. I went ahead and cut the tape already, so we'd easily pull it out. Got a little phone packaging here. Here we have the actual iGen 200S itself. And then we have a small box with accessories. Let's go ahead and toss this aside. Let's see what we got in here. All right, so inside we have a small carrying case, which houses a power supply for AC power, a car charger, and an adapter to allow you to use 12 volt charging sources. And finally, we have our iGen 200S user manual. So before we move forward any further, uh, I would just like to ask everyone, uh, if you like this kind of content or are interested in any of the things that I review, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, unfortunately, most of my viewers have not actually subscribed, so my channel has not grown as much as I'd like to. So if you're feeling like in a good mood and want to help me out, I'd really appreciate it if you guys click subscribe. And if you like the video, go ahead and click the like button and uh, share with your friends if you think they might be interested in something like this. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is do an overview of the unit itself. And as you can see here, we are looking at the side of the unit, which has the LED display. And you'll notice the battery indicator is moving up, and that is because the battery is charging right now as I have it plugged in. If we press the AC button, you'll see AC pop up and then you'll show 0 W, which that indicates how many watts are being pulled out currently. And you'll also notice that there is a small AC symbol right here showing that the AC is actually turned on. And we're going to go ahead and turn on the DC. And you'll notice that the DC symbol pops up here and the USB symbol pops up letting you know that the USBs are now powered. And the only thing that you can't see right now on here is over to the far right, to the right of the AC, there's a small error indicator that can pop up that is currently not up because it's not an error. Okay, and next we're gonna talk about the right side of the unit and we're gonna start from top and work our way down to the bottom. So up at the very top, you have a button for the flashlight which turns it on and off. Here is the flashlight on this unit. So I'll go ahead and press it once to turn it on. And if you press and hold the flashlight, it will go into SOS mode. And you press again to turn off and then press once it turns on, go dim and then off. So next down, you can see we have our two AC plugs. One of them is a three prong and one is two prong. In order to power that up, you just press the AC button and you'll notice the little green light comes on. And then when you're not using it, go ahead and press that and turn it back off. And those are capable of up to 150 watts of continuous power at 120 volts with up to a 300 watt peak and next we're going to talk about our DC outputs. So this here is a USB-A. It's capable of putting out 5 volts DC at up to 2.4 amps at 12 watts max. We then have a quick charge USB-A, which is a 3.0 port capable of 5, 9, and 12 volts DC up to 3 amps with 18 watts max. Then we have a USB-C, which is capable of five, nine, and 12 volts DC, up to three amps or 18 watts max. Down here, we have a six millimeter, nine to 12.6 volt DC port, which is up to 10 amps, and that is where you would plug in your cigarette lighter adapter. And then over here on the right, we have the DC on button, which brings power to all of these ports. And you'll notice that it's on when the green light is there. 
Okay, and here is the back of the unit, and you'll notice there is actually nothing on the back of this unit. Okay, and here we are on the left side of the unit, and as you can see, this is where the power from the charging port is, and I have it currently plugged in and charging, and you'll notice that the LED illuminates green, and on this unit, the actual fan kicks on immediately during charging, and we will see if that is the same for when we're actually using the power, but when it is charging, the fan is running to keep everything nice and cool. Okay, next we're gonna go over some specifications. The iGen 200S has lithium ion batteries. It has a capacity of 194 watt hours or 52,500 milliamp hours. It's capable of continuously running 150 watts with a peak watt of 300 watts. It has 120 volt AC output and it has DC output voltage of 9 to 12.6 volts. The sine wave on this unit through the AC is a modified sine wave with a 60 hertz frequency. The charge time is approximately 4 hours using an AC wall outlet, 4 to 5 hours using a car charger, and 4 to 5 hours using a solar panel. This unit also has a two-year warranty, and the dimensions of the unit are 8 inches long, 3.6 inches wide, and 7.36 inches tall. And this unit weighs 4 pounds. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things that a unit like this could power. You could use this to power a laptop, a TV, charging your phones and your laptops, using it to power lights, or household fans, uh, even run a stereo. Basically anything that is less than 150 watts, this guy can handle no problem. Now let's talk a little bit about what this can't handle and what would happen uh, if you actually tried to use one of these devices. Uh, so if you tried to use a hair dryer, an induction cooker, heater, rice cooker, a drill, an electric kettle, a microwave, toaster, or a blender, or anything else that exceeds the parameters, then this unit has a built-in safety feature and will actually just turn off so that the unit will survive. So now that we know what this unit is capable of running and what it is not capable of running, let's go ahead and actually run some tests and see what this unit will do and how it performs. Okay, for our first test, we're actually gonna be using the USB charger and I have my portable battery powered LED light and a pair of wireless earbud earplug headphones that I use out in the shop. And so we're gonna go ahead and press the DC button, hit turn on, and you'll see it actually indicate between these two devices, I'm drawing 3.7 watts. And just like the last unit I reviewed, one of the things I really like about this is you can simultaneously run the AC inverter and power AC devices, and you'll notice the little light came on there as well. And none of these are huge draws. However, I'm able to both pull from the USB ports and the AC cord uh, at the same time, which is a really nice feature. So on this low level, it definitely works. Uh, I, however, do not have a USB-C to try and pull anything out on uh, that aspect. So let's go ahead and move on to our next test. Okay, for our next test here, we're gonna go ahead and use this unit to power the two set lights and see how much power they each can pull. So I have them both turned all the way down. So turn on the left light and you see we jump up to four watts. If I turn on the right light, we jump up to 11 watts. And then if I turn the right, white, right light all the way up, we jump up to 38 watts. And if I turn the left all the way up, we jump up to 61 watts. And this unit seems to have no problem uh, running both of these at full power. Uh, it's not even quite maxing it out. Okay, so here we have my Lenovo uh, low-end gaming laptop. And let me go ahead and show you what happens when I actually plug this laptop in. Okay, here we go. It, it errors out, shows EO6, and starts to flash. Now, I thought at first maybe it was a fluke, but 
I think that this laptop is capable of pulling uh, more power than it should. It's capable of pulling 2.5 amps. And so to get your watts, you times your amps by the voltage. So if you take the 120 and times it by 2.5, you get 300 watts. And so I'm assuming that this is pulling more than the 150 watts on a regular basis, even if it is not in the gaming mode, uh, which would uh, use the most power, of course. So I'm gonna swap this laptop out for another laptop and we'll see if that doesn't work for us. Okay, here's my small Panasonic Toughbook that has more of what I would call a, an average size non-gaming laptop uh, power supply. This will pull up to 168 watts approximately and plug it right in there. And I'm showing 45 watts pull, 47, no problem. Uh, it's running, I have the screen brightness all the way up. So takeaways from this, this unit will run most laptops. You get a laptop and throw in a GPU for something like gaming or processing or something that is gonna pull significantly more power, then this may not work for that. But for your casual users, your Chromebooks, your daily laptops for school and stuff like that, uh, this should run any of those things probably no problem, uh, assuming it doesn't have a large power brick. Uh, but you can actually look at the power supply on your laptop times 120 volts by the amount of amps that it can draw and you'll know whether or not it will fall into the parameters of this unit and whether or not it'll work for you. All right, next I wanna demonstrate using our included accessory for the cigarette plug. And just go ahead and plug that right in there and turn it on. And you can plug in any cigarette style plug. This one here is just a car charger with a USB and then I have my headphones plugged into that and as you can see, it's charging that. This is obviously a very small device and doesn't even pull up enough to put a reading on the screen. Uh, but it is charging, you can see the red light come on there. Turn that off and red light goes away. So that's how simple it is to use a cigarette plug device on this machine. Okay, so here we are for our next test. We're gonna do the laptop run test. We've got the laptop and the iGen 200S are both fully charged and ready to go. I have the screen brightness on the laptop turned all the way up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the inverter here and it is 8.58 a.m. at the moment. And I'm gonna go ahead and select play all and we'll put it on theater mode and we'll make the timestamp a little bit bigger. All right, so we're just going to let this play. Start time was the end of 8.58, and I'm going to go ahead and cut over to a time lapse, and we'll uh, bring you back when this thing's all done. Okay, so as you saw in the last test, the iGen 200S was able to run my laptop for seven hours and 17 minutes. Now, one thing I would like to point out and have you keep in mind is that old laptop has a hard time keeping its battery charged and uh, was in fact dead when I pulled it out. And as you'll notice in that little time lapse there, the actual time that the laptop survived after the 200S uh, ran out of power uh, was very short so it's quite possible that this was working a little harder to keep this laptop running uh, than a new laptop which 
would probably be a lot more efficient. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, your results may actually be better than mine, uh, depending on the use case and the actual load. So quickly, let's talk about some of the uses for this machine. Uh, you know, if you're a car camper, if you have an RV, or if you're just out traveling, something like this can really keep you going. Uh, if you're using set lights, you, know, you saw these could plug in and work just fine. Or if you're out even flying a drone or going out and doing stuff on the road, you keep your cameras charged up, your drones charged up, uh, which gives you a little bit more time to actually do the things that you're enjoying doing. Uh, out and about instead of having to find somewhere to always plug in. So that's something to keep in mind. I think that there are a lot of use cases where something like this will be perfect. So in closing, I'd like to say that I do like the iGen 200S. I think it's a capable machine and it'll do most of the things that probably an average person is going to need it to do. Uh, just keep in mind if you have a laptop that draws over that uh, the 300 amps or over, then you're really going to have a hard time getting it to work. Um, really, the 150 range is going to be where you want to be if you're going to use this for specifically for a laptop or something like that or any other devices. Just make sure that uh, you check out the power and times the voltage by the amps so you get your watts for the AC side of the house and figure out whether or not you fall within the parameters of this. You may need to step up to the bigger unit or even be okay with the smaller unit. Uh, though you do get a little bit more capacity with this unit. So I think that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, I think at the price point, it's a pretty sweet unit. And uh, if you guys want to check one of these out, I'll actually have a link down in the description below to Amazon. Uh, I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you guys do end up picking this up or anything else, uh, I get a small kickback, which I use to keep stuff coming for the channel. Uh, and it's at no extra cost to you guys. So feel free to check that out. And I think that about wraps up this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or things that maybe you'd like to see from Westinghouse that you want me to review and uh, give you guys a good opinion on it, uh, let me know in the comments. Just drop it down there. And I try to get back to everybody as much as I possibly can. So at this point in time, I just like to say thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.